So we saw our Yuri ship. Very nice. Hope we get to see more of them. <laughs> But I am curious to see what the fourth episode holds. But if you like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I've got my full length reactions up on Patreon as well as early access for this series. But other than that, let us get started. うっさと。ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと
Pinky promise. <laughs> wow. Still feels the the heat of his uh, of his skin. Oh, feels all tingly. <laughs> you must be allergic to. <laughs> no time no see. Ah, golden week. Wow. <laughs> here, here yet again. Here she is having fun while everybody. <laughs> I've lost control of myself. She had to go talk to the teacher about it. She's so damn square. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, what the... When the world she... What, she's worried that everybody else is doing... Oh, it's her, yeah. Are you getting results, though? Damn, going for first name. <laughs> the slacker within me. <laughs> oh my god, she is literally just like her. <laughs> the biggest slacker in the faculty. Wow. Look. Lazy people will always find ways to work efficiently, so... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Tendency to space out. Don't waste your travel time. Ugh. What if you can't read while on the bus, though? <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Discipline. The, 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 the struggles of, yeah, the struggles of keeping a schedule. Cat! <laughs> oh. Oh! You thought she... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look at him getting carried like a baby. <gasps> Candy! Look at that expression on that cat. Dude, fucking time anxiety is the worst. Oh, yeah, she is busy studying that sometimes she forgets to look. At the beautiful world around her. Aren't too bad in moderation. One in three invitations. Run pretty long. Because I work. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, maybe Mitsumi will be there for her. <laughs> the bus! <gasps> Cat! <gasps> Mitsumi in cat form. <laughs> or... 
Oh, it's not that stupid fucking low Einstein music. <laughs> oh, damn, dude. Came with the receipts. <laughs> mm -hmm. The power of fucking spite, dude. <laughs> After all the time I spent on it. <laughs> Cold but true. <laughs> So it is the same cat from the uh, from the ending, the black cat. I mean, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Very nice. Please stop skipping me to the next episode. But okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go write my notes, and we will be right back to the center. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the English quiz. I know a boy of which father is a doctor. <laughs> I know a boy whom father is a doctor. God, th these are some really, I mean, I would assume these are like rather basic English grammar uh, grammar stuff, which like, sadly enough, most students here in, uh, here in the US would still fucking fail. <laughs> Just because the fucking education system is absolutely shit. And like, when it comes to grammar, like you barely, even learn grammar a lot of the times, right? Most of the stuff that I feel you learn in, a, in, in English schools, in English school, in school, in English class, are like literature shit, right? Literature devices and all that. And it's just like, cool, you know? I know what, what it is to understand why that tree is blue, but goddamn, I can't write for shit because my grammar is shit. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is this? That is... Wait, hold on. John is spelled incorrectly, but... <laughs> or is it... Maybe it would still pronounce as John, right? If the if the H is silent. Okay, hold on. I, I actually... I actually want to look at this. So, the magazine... Wait. The magazine I need is not in the bookstore. Okay, for a second there. I, I, I was confused for a second. <laughs> right? The woman who I thought was his mother turned out to be his girlfriend. Oh, uh? <laughs> well then, the restaurant I went to, or the restaurant in <laughs> the restaurant in that I went. So the only thing is the restaurant I went in was very cozy. Okay, the town has changed a lot where she lived. The town has changed a lot, comma, where she lived. I guess. That is, that is why John made up his mind to get married with Milia or Mila, Mil Mi Mila, yeah, Mila. When driving near a park, watch for children crossing the road. But there's a blank here. What is? Oh, is this? No. What is it? I don't know what though. I don't know what this is. I, I thought it was gonna be fill in the blank, but technically, it's already a completed sentence. Initially, I thought this was going to be like a. Uh, for like commas and stuff, right? For for punctuations. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm, 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 I'm out of this English quiz. <laughs> All right, so that was episode four of Skip and Loafer. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a pretty good episode. We 
Uh, we're a little bit more inline focus on two specific scenarios, which I very much enjoy. So the first one is with Shima and his past, and then the other is with Mitsumi going through her second time that we've seen her, <laughs> right? Where the, 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 the first time was in the club where she was thinking about all the clubs that she might consider joining, you know, for the fun of it. But then she sees that everybody else is joining for uh for academic reasons and then she's just like oh shit you know i shouldn't be joining clubs just for fun <laughs> and so the same thing happened to her again except for golden week where she does all she went all over tokyo with her aunt and, and, and she had the funnest of times but then she realizes that all her friends have been considering have, have been studying and thinking about the exam and everything right she's been slacking off yet again and so she got to go and meet with uh, the girl that we saw in the last episode, Takamine, who keeps like a very, very busy and like minute by minute schedule. But uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go talk about Shima first, since he is the first half. Uh, we see Mitsumi starting off her morning, <laughs> starting off her morning with the usual. Uh, it, you know, she's gonna head home, she's gonna head to school early. She's got all these. Uh, she, she's she's got plans, right? She's. A little bit of the same as Takamine in the sense that she's planning ahead of things and then and then the plans kind of just end up foiling itself. But the difference is that she just kind of makes vague plans that she's going to do instead of making it like minute by minute, right? At specifically 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. or something. I'm going to be at school or whatever. So, whew, all, right, all right, I'll talk a little bit more about Takamine in just a bit. <laughs> But with her, you know, getting all cheery, cheery, a little cozy about like, yeah, I'm going to have a perfect morning. Of course, it's law. She's not going to have a perfect morning. It's going to get foiled <laughs> or it's going to get spoiled for her. There you go. So she ends up encountering Kanechika, who, well, he wasn't really thinking about recruiting her anymore, right? She actually just wants to ask about Shima, but since she's over here, you know, being polite and saying that she doesn't want to join anymore... He ends up using that to his advantage because of course he did. <laughs> like, he takes his advantage and he just lies to her. Perhaps it's a little bit of a truth, right? Perhaps he is looking to recruit people into the drama and we saw in the previous episode, I think it was, no, in episode two, when uh, people were coming to watch the show and somebody was just like, well, only this much of the first years came to watch? This is really bad, that, that sort of thing, right? So perhaps the drama club is in a bit of a pickle, who knows? <laughs> But he calls and says that and ends up getting Mitsumi to follow him to uh, follow him to wherever it was so he can show the video of Shima. And we saw <laughs> we saw we saw Kanichika uh, oh, after he's doing this, he thinks this girl's a pushover. I worry for her <laughs> after just doing it to her. Right? <laughs> God, this girl's such a fucking pushover. I worry for her, but Fuck it, dude. I'll do it again if I have to. <laughs> uh, he shows this uh, old, old show where, what is it? Where Shima, I assume he was in elementary during this time. Because that does not look like a middle school person. Unless he truly hit like a growth spurt somewhere on his third year of middle school. <laughs> I mean, it could happen, right? But... I assume this is probably near the end-ish of his elementary time and like perhaps like somewhere around in like the first year of his middle school perhaps you know if he really did hit a fucking growth spurt <laughs> right towards his second or third year so yeah uh she she gets to see that this is what Shima has done uh before right his his achievements and all that and Kanechika is using this opportunity to get Mitsumi to try and recruit Shima into the drama club since she's his friend and perhaps he would listen to her but you know he seems to be very determined that he doesn't want to join acting and just getting someone especially if he eventually figures out it's Kane Chika who got Mitsumi to do it right uh, to, to tell her that he should join the acting club of course he's gonna be really fucking upset about it and, and as I just said, you know, with Kanichika saying like, oh, I worry for her, she's a total pushover. And then here he is, fucking getting her to, to try and do this. <laughs> but I do like that uh, after this whole thing and after 
uh, after he is trying to get her to tell him to join the art club, she ends up, and also, you know, her day has missed out too. She was supposed to get the new water for Sato-san's flowers, or new, yeah, new water for the flowers, but he did, but she didn't, and so somebody else had to do it. She's late to class, or she came in later than usual. <laughs> so all her plans are just out the fucking window and she ends up spending all this time uh, failing through the rest of her classes, right? Because her plans has crumbled, right? Her morning plans has crumbled and now she is here having to deal with this next issue that Kanechika has put onto her and so she's just fumbling throughout her entire <laughs> school days. But I do like that uh, uh, that Mitsumi is thinking more about, you know, perhaps what Shima could be thinking. Because that's something that she's starting to learn uh, back in episode 2, I believe, right? With the, with the, through Yuzuki as well, where she's just like, well, you don't really know what people are, are, are thinking. And she wants to learn how to, uh, she wants to learn and understand other people. So I like that she is taking this opportunity to think about like, well, if he did such a great accomplishment, why didn't he brag about it during his uh, during his introduction? Right, he seems to be very keen on keeping this a secret. So why is he keeping it a secret? Right, and maybe it's something that is a sensitive subject that he doesn't want to talk about. And of course, we've seen him watch the drama club thing, and he ended up leaving early, and he looked a little somber when Mitsumi was ta uh, was talking to him after the the whole drama club thing. So. You have to, you have to wonder, right? Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, with her fumbling through the entire thing, and also, you know, I, I like that she was thinking about how like creepy it would be if she just goes up to him, just be like, "I saw your little show." <laughs> so yeah, I, I like that she's being considerate of him and trying to, you know, not to just say it out loud. <laughs> you know, she uh, Mitsumi does have some sort of tack. <laughs> But again, after failing her way through class and having to go to the uh, nurse's office, getting hit with a volleyball and all that, she and Shima ends up talking. We see Shima, we know that Shima is able to read people quite, quite well. I, he was able to read Mika in the last episode and he gave her the compliment when she was feeling very insecure about herself. And here he is uh, seeing that Mitsumi is uh, there's something uh, there's something that's up with Mitsumi, right? And he doesn't know exactly what's going on here, so he just straight up asks her, like, "So what's happening, right? You've been acting you've been acting off this whole day. So what's going on?" <sighs> so we get in, right into the crux of it, where <laughs> where Mitsumi ends up admitting that Kane Chika told her to tell him that maybe he should join the I was gonna say the art club, the drama club. <laughs> And so, yeah, here we are at the crux of it where we see that Shima says that he doesn't want to act anymore because he didn't do it for fun, despite him giving it his all, right? He didn't do it for fun, he did it to make his mom happy. And so that kind of comes in with these other questions where, like, is his mom dead now? Is that why he's just like, well, you know, I, I don't have my mom here to make her happy anymore, so what's the point, right? I don't care about it anymore. And he kind of just loses that passion or uh, as with, you know, kids who ends up getting forced into something that they don't have fun in, right? But they're only doing it because their parents want them to and they want to make their parents happy, right? Eventually those toy people, they end up becoming like, like Shima, right? Feeling a little listless. They don't want to do this whole thing anymore. And uh, as he goes and he says, he can't handle the hopes and expectations of others, right? And he calls himself pathetic for it. So, kind of makes you wonder whether I would, I don't know, I would kind of assume, or, you know, until they tell me that she's dead, I'm going to assume the mother's alive. And uh, we've had, we've gotten to some point where he felt like he has failed his mother's expectations. And instead of trying it again, he's just like, ah, fuck it, right? I'm just gonna wear my don't care crown and I'm gonna continue on with life like that. So we'll, uh, we'll just have to see a little bit more into Shima's past, but until then, right, that's sort of just my current speculations. But then uh, it kind of goes back to what I was thinking about uh, was for when he was going to the drama club and actually watching it, right? What got him to actually want to go there? and watch it and then why was he looking so sad and why was he looking so sad when he was talking to Mitsumi right after that 
right? So it, it, it's just kind of like, okay, so you say that you don't do this for fun, but at the same time, what brought you to the drama club and why were you so sad about it, right? Are you, like, did you come here just to feel like you're gonna see your mom again or what? <laughs> All right, that's, that's if, if the mom's dead. <laughs> But as I said, until they say that the mom's alive, uh, until the mom's dead, I'm gonna assume she's alive. We also got Mitsumi explaining, sorry if I'm looking up, <laughs> there's just a spider crawling over my roof again. Every time. I don't know why. Spiders, they just fucking love this place. I keep kicking them out and they keep coming f back in. Okay. Anyways. Uh, we got Mitsumi to talk about her goal with Shima, right? Shima kind of already knows her goal a bit, right? Back in first, it, is it first episode or is it second episode? Somewhere around there, right? He, uh, second episode, she introduced herself and, and all that. So, you know, he kind of has an idea about it, but she goes a little bit more into detail and says that, you know, she wants to tackle the problem at its core and the problem being the underpopulated towns, right? She could just be there and help out her town, but why do that when she can just join the government in Tokyo and fucking deal with it there? So it's 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 a big go, right? And I like that even though she was trying to laugh it off, Shima just tells her in a very serious tone and face that's, hey, don't laugh about that. Don't laugh it off because it's a great go. And then that's when he goes back to like, oh, you know, if you have goals and stuff, the, you, 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 that means that you gotta have a lot of hopes and expectations of other people. <laughs> And unlike me, the pathetic person that I am, I can't handle it. <laughs> I like this whole scene in general just because they're out here having a conversation about their goals and their dreams, which, you know, can be a very sensitive topic for some people. Uh, and then we have uh, Shima who is being vulnerable, right? Him saying that, oh, I'm pathetic because I can't handle this. I can't handle the expectations. You know, that's why you and Kane Chika are just so great. You guys have a goal and you guys are really going out there and achieving it. So yeah, I like this moment of vulnerability that he opens up and Mitsumi decides that she's going to do the same as well. And she says, hey, I almost toppled the pressure as well. But I had a friend who, who basically supported me, right? She, she was too, she was so scared of failing the exam that she just didn't eat for a while. So, you know, she's just a complete mess. And we have Fumi here who just took her to a restaurant to, to buy her some gyoza and fried rice, you know? And she even fucking, she, she said, I'm gonna divvy up the fried rice, right? She's gonna divide it up and she's gonna give it to her. And it's, it's such a nice scene. I've, I've already mentioned how much I really like uh, 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 Mitsumi and Fumi's relationship, but just this scene in general just kind of solidifies why I love their friendship so much and like, ugh, just got a little bit of tears from this scene. What? How the fuck dare they? <laughs> I'm so upset, but I was gonna say that I technically didn't shed a tear. It was all still, but I technically did wipe it. So it did came out of my my eyes. Fuck, <laughs> give me back my tears. <laughs> I'm so upset, girl. <laughs> but with this story, uh, Mitsumi ends up saying, even if I'm doing this only for myself, it made me happy to have a friend know and watch over me, right? Uh, having a friend, it, it feels good to actually have people who support you in your dreams, right? And that's the really good thing with Mitsumi. Her family supports her. She, she, as she says, she's the hometown prodigy, right? So she's got basically her friends, you know, her friends, her family and everybody out there. Uh, their hopes and expectations are laid upon her and it's... It's it's a lot, but at the same time, right? Again, they're 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 supportive. They're very supportive of her, and we we see the time the, the the times in like episode two and three. Is it episode? Did Fumi also call it episode three? I can't remember. Did she? <laughs> did she? Hold on, let me look at my notes. No, Fumi didn't. It it, it was an episode two. So yeah, I, I like that Fumi is essentially. Her, her 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 support here her, her one of her support pillar right when uh mitsumi was starting to feel a little sad uh with the whole karaoke session she ends up uh, fumi ends up calling her to talk to her about it and i i, I just i just really enjoy that right uh, again for someone like mitsumi who is a, a pushover and it seems like she could get 
somber. She could get somber. She could stumble over quite easily, but she's trying to keep a smile at it. But her fan, her her friend and her family knows that she's fucking lying to them about it, right? <laughs> so. Uh, Mitsumi, perhaps, right, because she doesn't want people to worry, she ends up kind of lying and not talking about her issues. And so, you know, if she didn't have support, uh, if she didn't have someone like Fumi or, or her family, she probably is the sort of person who kind of just going to bottle it all up until it just finally bursts. So, it's nice that Mitsumi has someone like Fumi, has a good support system. Look, dude, I'll cry for any good support system. <laughs> But with the whole Fumi stuff, God, I was supposed to say this, but I ended up, I ended up talking more about Fumi. But with her talking about her, her stuff with uh, Fumi, she ends up telling Shima, if you ever find a goal for yourself, then succeed or fail, well, go anywhere you want and eat some good food. And they made a pinky promise about it, right? Very, very nice. And we also saw Mitsumi later looking at her fingers. She's like, oh, why is my finger so tingly? <laughs> Again, you're probably allergic to him. That's why you're getting that tingly feeling. <laughs> she tried going to the doctor about it. <laughs> but that's the end of the first part. Very much enjoyed it. And I kind of already mentioned this whole part with her, you know, going on to Golden Week and everything. So I will skip over that. And I, I do like the screen transition where... <laughs> Where, where as they're talking, right, and she, she, we've got all these lightning buzzes as she realizes that everybody, you know, they're, they're not fucking around here. They're not here to have fun, they're here to study for their school exam. <laughs> and it goes to black and it finally, like, fa if it finally fades out and we're in, like, a whole different setting, right, with her going into the teacher's office and talking to her homeroom teacher about it. <laughs> And it's just so fucking funny, dude. Like, Hanazono is just over here like, God damn, this fucking kid is so square. <laughs> and I, I I love that she... Is she okay, like, her whole thing is that she decided to look through her, her, her profiles. <laughs> and, and, and like, like, the stuff that she's doing right now, right? And... Uh, also, in, in her head, in, in Hana Zono's head, uh, the teacher, she wonders why Mitsumi's all worried because she she scores high in tests, right? She she was ranked the top when she first came in. That's why she was the one who did the fucking speech. And she was ranked in, like, the top 20 for, like, the whatever other exam, right? So why is she worrying about all this shit? <laughs> it's the peer pressure, Hana Zono. It's the peer pressure. But... Uh, yeah, she goes through her profile and she's just like, hey, you're part of the uh, Tsubame society, right? So you already know someone who's disciplined. So she just guides her over to Takamine, who's the treasurer who we've seen before, right? The girl with... Also, with the whole thing between Hanazono and Mitsumi, uh, with Mitsumi saying she feels like she's slacking off compared to other people, and then Hanazono leading Mitsumi to someone else... And then one of the other teachers was like, oh, Hanazono is like one of the most, uh, is the biggest slacker around here. <laughs> and I just, uh, I'm just already thinking like, look, again, lazy people, they'll always try to find ways to work less. And that, that's why they work smart. Hanazono, she doesn't want to deal with this fucking shit. She, she already knows that there's somebody else in, in Mitsumi's life who can deal with it for her. So she just needed to guide her over to it. <laughs> So then she could go and fucking do something else. She doesn't want to do this shit. <laughs> Good for Hanazono. <laughs> Good for her. Anyways, uh, we're over here with, uh, again, Takamine, the treasurer. And Mitsumi decides that she's going to shadow Takamine for her for the rest of the day. And we kind of start seeing, like, them doing all these work. And then uh, we're starting to see how busy Takamine's schedule is, right? She's just like, oh, we gotta leave. The bus is coming in, like, five minutes, right? We gotta go right now. All right, we're gonna go visit this house. And we're gonna do some talks or whatever. I, I, I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> We've got this other thing about, also, people, uh, some schools even have their students plan their own school trips. I'm just like, what, what's going on there? I, I don't know what's happening there. But with with uh, Mitsumi thinking, how do people find time to study? I, it seems like uh, we're, we're all busy out here. And with, uh, with Takamine, God, I'm, I'm having troubles with all these names right now. With Takamine saying, the reality is some people are just naturally gifted and some just work hard. 
and she falls under the category of working hard, right? She says, personally, I recognize that I can't keep up unless I work hard. That's why I have this busy schedule. Ridiculous amount of schedule, but also, how long do you fucking spend on making that schedule? I have to wonder, <laughs> all right? Because I swear to Christ, it took me like 20, 30 minutes writing these freaking notes. I, I let, let her alone, she's over here writing her fucking schedule. And with her schedules, uh, she's got one of her sayings, no regrets, fill out, uh, what is it? I was gonna say fill. <laughs> I wrote it as gotta fill your day with no waste. All right, gotta make as much time, make, make as much use of the time you have. I think that's somewhere around what Takamine says, but she does say in her head because she can't tell it she can't say it to she can't say it to mitsumi because mitsumi is looking up to her with respect right now can't show a, a sign of weakness god damn it the spider's getting closer to me what the fuck are you doing i swear to christ that looks like the same spider that i kicked out like a month ago or two months ago i can't remember what an asshole <laughs> okay and she says that this busy schedule does lead her to having weekly nightmares of missing the bus. And I, all I gotta say is if you're having weekly nightmares of this, that's really bad. <laughs> that's, that's really bad. And I'm glad that we've got that whole result towards the end. You know, I'll talk about it in a, in a bit, but it is very fun that she's talking about how her nightmare is missing the bus. And then a minute later, she's, she literally missed the bus. <laughs> The bus had ran in like two minutes. They couldn't get over there in two minutes. So they failed and the next bus isn't going to be for another 15 minutes, which means that her whole fucking schedule is going to be out of whack. And so we see her just going into a, ah, my stomach hurts, right? That anxiety that's inside her is just kicking her in her stomach right now. Like you fucking idiot. Now you're wasting time. And that is time anxiety. God, I, I used to have major, major time anxiety because, well, you know, the whole issue with time anxiety is that you feel like you are wasting time if you aren't, if you aren't going, if you aren't fulfilling uh, whatever you're trying to do, right? This could also be like, you've got a time to meet with your friend and you're, you're there on time, right? But your friend is late. And that can give you, if you have time anxiety, that's really bad because you're over here like, well, fuck, you know, if you're late for a movie or something, you're like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss out on the fucking movie. I'm gonna miss out on 10 minutes of the movie because my friend's not here. This fucking sucks. <laughs> or if you're stuck in traffic or something and you're, you're late to a meeting or you're late to your work by like 10, 15 minutes, it's just like, fuck, I could have used that 10 minutes doing whatever that I need to do at work and now I'm missing all this and now I'm late on my work and it's 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 a lot it's a lot of anxiety but yeah time anxiety it's it's a thing <laughs> and that's exactly what Takemine has because she's planning it by the minute and that's really bad because when you plan things by the minute right especially if you don't have a backup plan and if everything goes out of wire, right? Everything goes haywire. What are you going to do? You have no backup plan. And now you're just like, fuck, I, 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 everything's all fucked up now. My plans are all shit. I can't do anything. <laughs> so it's, it, 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 it's, a, it's a lot. And again, I like that the end result is Takemine coming to realize that Mitsumi, despite her being a little similar to her, right? She's in terms of like, the whole time stuff and having to uh, spend as much t uh, sp try to make use of your time as much as possible she comes to realize that there's that difference between her and mitsumi and with mitsumi i i kind of talked a little bit about it when we saw her schedule where you know this is the difference between her mitsumi plans out her life but she plans it for like the very far future but the thing is that her plans is very malleable compared to Takamine, where Takamine's is she's doing it minute by the minute for the day, right? For the present, while Mitsumi has her plans for the future. <laughs> and the future can change, right? The future can be very malleable. You, you could literally, you know, you could have a dream that you had as an elementary kid, but then it eventually turns out into something else, right? You, you've bloomed into something else. You could be a whole different person in the next 10 years or so. There's a lot of 
malleability. I don't even know if that's a word, but yeah, there's a lot of that <laughs> in Mitsumi's plans compared to Takemine's plans. And uh, which is why it's a little bit easier for Mitsumi. And also because Mitsumi has a support pillar, <laughs> multiple support pillars. But uh, that's why Mitsumi, despite her, uh, a lot of the times, kind of stumbling through all these plans that she says that she was going to do, she still is able to pick herself back up because they're not rooted in minute by minute. Oh, I failed to do this in the morning. Okay, that's fine, but I can still do all these other stuff, right? That, that's totally, that, that's totally cool. And again, uh, Mitsumi is able to adapt to uh, her, her whatever plans that she has, even if she stumbles through it, because they're not really, uh, they're not really constricted by time. <laughs> For the most part, right? She, she Technically, there was a time limit for what Mitsumi wanted to do in the morning, but, she, uh, uh, well, in the morning, in the first half, because technically it was a whole different day or a whole different week. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that that morning in the first half, that, that was a bit of a time limit, but that was very expansive compared to the minute by minute. It's really good to be more in Mitsumi's headspace than it is to be in Takemine's, because, like, for me, when I had very bad, very, very, very bad time anxiety, I would get very upset at people. Of course, I wouldn't tell it to them, you know? I'm the sort of person who bottles everything up. But I would get very upset and I would get very mad at the person who's late, even though they're probably only late by like 5-10 minutes. But that's a lot of minutes that I could have spent with them <laughs> instead, right? But, they, but here they are, fucking late instead. And uh, I kind of learned to ease down a bit. I still have time anxiety through, throughout all of this, but I've learned to uh, I, I've learned to just get myself to settle down. And the, the way that I did it with with my whole time anxiety is that I tend to add things by 30 minutes, or I tend to switch the time by like uh, again by like 30 minutes or an hour, right? If I say that we're meeting up. And like specifically, I would hope that we would get there by like three or something. I would say, hey, meet up at 2.30 or something, right? So then even if they're a little bit late during that initial meetup time, if as long as they still get there by three, I should, you know, I, feel, I, I would still feel a little bit fine. And then for other and for friends that I know who will always be fucking late, <laughs> right? I know that they'll be there eventually, but they'll always be fucking late. If they tell me that they're coming at like, two or something, I'll be like, okay, they're probably gonna come here by three, <laughs> right? I, I kind of add a buffer to, to the way that I schedule my time. If I'm making a schedule, I try to make it like a little bit 30 minutes earlier. And then if somebody's telling me that they're gonna come to where I am in this, uh, at two or whatever, I add in, I add in a buffer time in order to make myself feel better because event, it, because look, if you give me a fucking time, and you say that you're gonna be here in the next 30 minutes, I expect you to be in there in 30 minutes. All right, back, especially if I was like back in high school or something, or uh, like a year or two after high school, I, I was still going through that phase. But yeah, if you were telling me during those years, I expect you to be there right on time on what you were saying, or else I'm just gonna be here in a, in a, in a whole ball of anxiety. But as I said, you know, as a, I, I've, I've grown and I've tried to ease down my anxiety and all that. And that's, that, that's how I work it. And if you have time anxiety, you know, you can always try my method as well. <laughs> Truly doesn't really help you f fix the issue, the root issue, but it certainly makes you feel a lot better. <laughs> But okay, well, I, I feel like I kind of just went through what I was talking about, you know, and with, with Takemine having her thoughts where she says, It's like Mitsumi-san seems diligent, but deep down, she's... And she's over like, it's amazing that buses shows up here every 15 minutes. <laughs> if we play with this cat, 15 minutes will pass in no time. <laughs> Very fun. I, even though she's, we, they missed the bus, it's just like, well, okay, you know, the, the bus will come back in 15 minutes. We can play with this cat. That's totally fine, right? She's not really worrying about the time. And I very much enjoy that. And, uh, and, and then also this whole scene with Takemine talking about like, oh man, I've, we've wasted like 60 minutes or something. Maybe I can take, make some of those time back by studying on the bus. And then she gets distracted by Mitsumi. And she comes to see, you know, the beautiful scenery of Tokyo. I, 
We're in Tokyo. Yeah, so there she gets to see the beautiful scenery of Tokyo. And perhaps that's the sort of scenery. Oh, my lights is dead. <laughs> Maybe she has never seen this type of scenery before because she's so busy looking at her book all the time, right? She says that uh, recording, sorry, uh, being in the bus, you know, that's, that's no time to slack off. You still have got to, you've, you've still got to make use of that time, right? And study. So she's always having her nose in the book, in her book, and she's never looking up and see the world around her. And I, I also would assume that's one of the message, right? Sometimes you're so busy body that you, you never really have the time to just step back and look at the world and see how beautiful it is. So it's very nice. I, I very much enjoy the uh, the message that Mitsumi has gone through to Takemine just by her being herself. So after the bus scene, we've got Mitsumi uh, thinking about how how cool Takemine is and how she wants to be like her. All right, make most of each moment so you don't have any regrets. <laughs> and so we've got Mitsumi who's like, oh, maybe I should make a schedule too. And so here she is spending time writing out a schedule. And we saw later on that she ends up spending most of her nights just just making the schedule so she didn't have any time to sleep <laughs> great dude some great god it, it, she's over like decide what food to get at the convenience store in three minutes that's three minutes is <laughs> well i mean you know if, if, if you're really busy you want to get to school early but jesus fucking christ but yeah as she starts to like figure out what she needs to do and she's just like oh should i turn down one in three invitations to hang out i'm like damn dude one in three invitations like guys you're really popular <laughs> and then she starts thinking about like oh man my family calls you know they do run on low uh they do run pretty long but my family worries about me so like that's not really wasted time and then she starts thinking about her, her time with Fumi, where she's like, well, the time I spent with Fumi was indispensable too. And she starts to think like, oh, is it only, uh, do I only think like that because things have succeeded, right? Can I only say that because it worked out in the end? But if it didn't work out in the end, would she have felt like this, this time that she had spent was a waste of time? <laughs> Which I guess would follow to what, uh, well, before all of that, right, we've got Takamine, who, uh, who, who had, who had her issue of missing the bus, as usual, you know, her weekly nightmare. <laughs> but this time, she's, uh, she's comforted by a black cat. You know, the bus came, and she ends up, uh, going on a trip, and I just, all I have is just that stupid song from Lil Einstein. You know, you know that fucking meme? You know, you know that bass, that heavy bass version of Lil Einstein? <laughs> Okay, uh, as I was saying, uh, going back to what Takemine had said, and also her saying, I don't think it's a good idea to follow my lead, right? And she opens up herself a little bit. Right? She, she says, I'm too ashamed to mention it, but I, I miss, I failed to get into my preferred middle school. And sometimes I think about the what ifs. But now she's enjoying her high school life. Good for her. <laughs> and she says, You never find out where you made the best time of your... You made the best use of your time until much later in life. Which, honestly, that could just be like what Mitsumi was talking about. Where she felt like her time with Fumi was indispensable. But that's because, you know, now that she is here where she is, that's how she feels about it. Right? It could have been completely different if she had failed. But who knows? Who knows, she would have never known that until it actually happened, but it never did. So yeah, I, uh, I very much enjoyed this whole uh, this whole time slot that we've got for Takamine, right? I really appreciate that we've got, uh, uh, I really appreciate that we've got a little bit of time with her as well. I, I very much enjoy that. I always, uh, I, again, I just knew that she, with that fucking packed schedule of hers, she was going to suffer from time anxiety. <laughs> And I'm just over here like, my fellow kin, <laughs> relatable. <laughs> Except I didn't plan out by the minute, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> but that is pretty much all I have for this episode. As I said, pretty good episode. I really enjoyed it. I like both, uh, I, I like both parts and I like that it was very much more focused. I mean, I, I say that as if it wasn't focused on other things in the, in the other episodes. So, just scratch what I just said there, so. 
because <laughs> they has been very focused on like specific characters each episode. So I I, I very much enjoyed that. I I, I will say uh, I did mention on how Shima's character doesn't really interest me as much, and uh, as we're continuing to learn a little bit more about him, right, you know, I'm I'm still having some some wonders, some thoughts, some speculations, and all that. And it I suppose it does provide a sort of mystery that makes me think about like, oh, I wonder what. I wonder what Shima is going to be when he grows up, or I wonder what's going on with his past and all that. But overall, eh, he's still uh, he's he's still there, you know. It's uh, still appreciate. Yeah, I do I do like that. He's uh he's able to he's able to pick up uh, on on how people are feeling. Perhaps that's something that he learned during his time as a child actor, or perhaps that was just how he learned in order to appease his mother. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we still have a lot of questions about his mother, about his family. So there's there's that whole spiel. We do know that uh, in the first episode when he was hanging out with uh, some of his middle school friends, where I had mentioned that he felt very aloof during those times. Perhaps he has been feeling quite listless the whole time. And, you know, that also contributes to his a little bit of aloofness. But we saw how you know he was falling after mitsumi in the first episode as she was just you know running for her life but also running at a snail's pace <laughs> so uh, it, you know it, uh, mitsumi has already had that effect on shima and we saw that in the first episode where his middle school friends was just like oh what happened to you you've changed man <laughs> so where'd the spider go oh he moved over there the fucker, just wait until he fucking gets down here. I'm gonna trap him again. I don't know if it's the same spider, actually. But if it is, I'm gonna trap him again. I'm gonna tell him to get the fuck out. <laughs> what was I talking about? Shima. Shima. Yeah. So, despite the the, the, the little in, intrigue for, for Shima's character, you know, I'm still very, uh, uh, I still feel very eh about him. But we'll see uh, as we continue to see more of him. I, I do like his and Mitsumi's relationship, right? As I said, I really like, uh, I, I very much enjoy having the characters do their low emotional bonding before any sort of romance pops up. So I like that here they are doing their low emotional bonding time, being vulnerable and talking about their goals and dreams. So very nice. <sighs> but if I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I will see you guys in the next episode.